Hey, welcome back guys, it's Molten here wishing you a happy Halloween. Since it's the October season filled with ghosts, ghouls, goblins, witches, wizards and plenty of candy, I thought we'd take a look at an opening of the exact same name, the Halloween Gambit, but with a twist. If you're not afraid to sacrifice a piece of move 3 and venture into scary unclear positions, then watch on. The position we have on the board is the traditional Halloween's Gambit, but that's not what we were looking at today. Instead we're going to and take a look from the black side instead. The following game between two Australians, Jason Chan and Grandmaster David Smirnen was played way back in the 2006 Queenstown Classic. Here in the following position, obviously black can't go knight takes e4 straight away. We need white to waste a move and particularly this Gambit works really really well when white plays the move g3 in this particular position and here I'll show you exactly why. For example here when we go for our knight sacrifice, knight takes e4, white responds knight takes e4, here we can play the move d5 and compared to the normal Halloween's gambit, the knight here in e4 doesn't actually have the g3 square to retreat to, therefore the knight only has one good square and that's the move knight to c3. Here we should continue to chase the knight with the pawn move, pawn to d4. And here white has two main options. If the knight goes to e4, then we'll continue to chase it again with the move pawn to f5. And here black will continue to chase the knights around the board, gaining space and grabbing heaps of initiative with his central pawns, eventually possibly winning the piece back. For example, knight g5 is well met by the move e4 as well as the possibility of bishop e7 and h6 to kick the knight's next move as well. White's best bet might be to just give the piece back altogether and play a move such as bishop g2, but this would allow us to simply take and after recapture, comfortably develop our piece with bishop to c5. Here we don't get our Halloween knight sacrifice, however we have a very comfortable position as black. However, in the game, Jason decided to play the move knight to b1 instead. And here, as black, we really can go for the initiative and we should immediately play the move pawn to e4 before white manages to play the move pawn to d3. We're a piece down here as black, but we're trying to get as much initiative going as possible before white manages to reorganize and develop his pieces. Here, white has a few options. One option might be to play knight to h4. After this I recommend we play the move queen to e7 and already we're threatening to play g5 attacking this knight on h4 therefore white doesn't have time to play a move such as bishop to g2 since g5 would win our piece back. If instead white tries to play a move such as f4 to try and give himself a little bit of room and also counter the move g5 well we can in fact play the move g5 anyway and after a move such as pawn takes g5, we can immediately seize the initiative with the move knight to e5, threatening ideas such as bishop to g4, as well as pawn to d3, which is a key move in a lot of these positions to simply stop white's queen side from developing altogether. For example, bishop to e2 here is well met by the move d3. And already white has a lot of development problems and most likely he will lose the piece back and black will maintain his initiative as well. Instead white chose to play the move knight to g1 holding on to the extra material but undeveloping his piece. And now black has two decent options. One option is to play knight to e5 threatening bishop to g4. And the idea is that if white plays queen takes e4 we can follow up with a nice discovered check with knight f3 and after knight takes we pick up the queen on e4. However in the game black chose to play the move knight to b4 instead hitting the pawn on c2 and the idea of pushing the pawn to d3. White played knight a3 and here black attacked the queen with the move d3. White slided the queen out of the way with queen to e3 and black simply took on c2 with a very unclear position since white would like to play the move bishop to g2 but this will be well met by the move knight to d3 check. White played bishop to g2. Here black played f5 to defend the pawn on e4. 
and after the move knight to e2, black hopped the knight into the d3 square, preventing white from castling and continuing on with his attack. White played king f1, and we reach a very unclear position, but, but one where black is fairly happy since the position is messy and he has um, a lot of counterplay and great attacking chances. Black played the move queen to e5, threatening to bring another piece into the game with tempo, an idea we've seen before in my attacking chess series. White played the move pawn to f4 to displace the queen, the queen dropped back to e6, knight d4, the queen went to f6, now the threat is to play bishop to c5 followed by castles kingside, with a very very um, easy to play position since the white pieces here on the queen side are completely stuck. In order to develop some pieces, white had now decided to give back some material, but now it's almost a little bit too late. And after bishop takes e4, pawn takes, queen takes, bishop e7, queen takes d3, white had to give up his good light squared bishop, which allows us to play bishop h3 check, king e1, followed by castle's queen side with a tremendous position. Since once again, the white king is stuck in the center, and white is yet to develop any of his queenside pieces. Here white took the pawn on c2. Black played bishop c5 to attack the knight. White played g4, threatening queen f5 and perhaps hoping to trade off queens. Black simply checks, king f2, and continues the attack with queen takes f4 check. Totally crushing position. After queen f3, the game finished after bishop takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes e4, after which white threw in the towel, since the move king g3 is well met by the response rook to f8, followed by a checkmate or a lot of gain of material in the next few moves. That's it for the reversed Halloween's Gambit. I believe it's even better than the original Halloween's Gambit from the white side, and it's definitely worth giving a try during one of your own games. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you on the next video. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button and tap on the notification bell so you get notifications every time I upload a new video.